Welcome to another Open Philosophy video. Today we will be continuing our discussion of targets in evolution. Again, this is a controversial topic because naturalists believe that there are no targets in evolution. They would have us believe that because we can fully understand the mechanisms involved that we have no need for teleology or ends or purposes in evolution. Of course, we can fully explain the mechanisms involved in a computer. Still, computers have ends, they are designed, they have purposes for which we use them. So there is no incompatibility between having a complete explanation of the mechanics of a process and arguing that it has ends. We prepared for our discussion of evolution by looking into the nature of randomness and found that it is not an objective property of reality but a measure of human ignorance. Turning to evolution, we found that the sequence of genes in organisms is extremely improbable. So improbable that it's like a tornado going through a junkyard and building a 747. In order to overcome this improbability, Richard Dawkins developed a computer model to show that random processes could achieve useful results in a relatively short amount of time. But Dawkins could only do this by giving his program a predefined target. Thus, improbability is overcome by pre-programming, by built-in targets. We've been pursuing that idea, the idea of built-in targets, and in the last video we found that it was confirmed by convergent evolution so that lines of evolution coming from different genetic stock converge to the same form in order to fit the same niche. Thus the forms are built into the laws of nature. In other words they are predefined and pre-programmed. Recall that in his effort to get us to believe that evolution could create order out of random chaos, Richard Dawkins claimed that we could derive anything from anything else. The new science of Evo Devo shows that this is not the case. Evo Devo studies the evolution of developmental mechanisms. It has discovered a series of toolkit genes whose expression can be modulated to vary structural forms. The same toolkit genes can yield different embryonic forms depending on their regulation. Thus, the gene BMP4 controls beak and jaw configurations. Modifying its expression produces parrots' nut-cracking beaks or the long, thin beaks hummingbirds use to extract nectar. It is thought that many of the changes resulting in new species come from mutations to the codes, the homeobox genes, controlling the expression of toolbox genes, rather than to the toolbox genes themselves. A major goal of Evo Devo is to identify and describe the functions and interactions of all toolkit genes. Contrary to Dawkins' claim that we can derive anything from anything else, evolution is far less random. Given that 40 independent evolutionary paths with eight different optical plans all yielded visions and Dawkins' thesis, we would expect that any mutation might eventually produce vision. In fact, one toolkit gene, PAX6, controls vision in organisms as diverse as vertebrates, mollusks, and fruit flies. Is convergence on the goal of vision explained by sharing PAX6 genes? Mechanistically, it is. But explaining how goals are attained does not refute their reality, or explain why PAX6, BMP4, and similar toolkit genes are in the shared genome. They are not random, because once they are established in the genome, they remain stable for hundreds of millions of years. Thus, their power and stability is coded into the laws of nature. In 2004, Neil Shubin and his team went to Canada's Ellesmere Island, about 600 miles from the North Pole. Shubin knew that that was one of the few places on Earth where beds of rock 350 million years old were exposed. He was fossil hunting, and his efforts were rewarded by a truly remarkable find. Tiktaalik rosacea, a 375 million year old fossil land exploring fish. It had a startling feature, wrists. Wrists were thought to be confined to fully land-based animals because fish do not need them. Shubin explains, 
This was telling us that a piece of the toolkit to make arms, legs, hands, and feet could very well be present in fish limbs. Lacking were the environmental conditions where these structures would be useful. The presence of this toolkit gene was later supported by genetic studies of a living relative of Tiktaalik, the paddlefish Peladon spathula. Without the conditions making these structures useful, there is no evolutionary pressure to develop a gene to form them. Thus, the capacity to form limbs needed for land survival evolved before the need for them, and without specific selection pressure for the unexpressed potential. Evolution is a forward-looking process. Preparing means in advance of ends is a strong indicator of intentionality. This may require rethinking the idea that genes are selected in response to environmental pressure. It now appears that specific capabilities, such as the ability to develop vision, wrists, or specific jaw and beak forms, are latent in the genetic toolkit, but unexpressed until needed. In other words, genes seem to develop adaptive flexibility before the environmental pressure to express the available alternatives. This is evidence of a forward-looking dynamic expressing intentionality. One surprising result of EvoDevo is that toolkit genes themselves are evolutionary targets. Once evolved, the coding sequences of toolkit genes are conserved so that nearly identical toolkit genes are found in different phyla. The genes are so stable against evolutionary changes that fruit flies can function with genes taken from chickens replacing their own. Thus, not only do toolkit genes have a tremendous unexpressed potential, which cannot be selected by natural selection, but they are also incredibly stable. This combination of stability and unexpressed potential occurs with such regularity in toolkit genes that it is almost the law of nature. In our next video, we will be considering punctuated evolution as further evidence for the existence of targets in the evolutionary process.